everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about epiretinal membranes, what they are, who gets them and how they are typically managed. So if you've been told you have an epiretinal membrane or you have a family member who has one, then please stay tuned and watch to the very end so that you are completely up to date about this particular condition. understand what an epiretinal membrane is, I first need to familiarise yourselves with a bit of anatomy. So if you look at this picture on screen now, which is off the back of the eye, you will see that the important bits of the back of the eye are the optic nerve head, we can then see blood vessels in the retina, and also then we have this particular area, which is called the macula. In terms of an epiretinal membrane, the easiest way I find to think of this is essentially imagine a piece of cling film and a piece of cling film being placed over the macular region and when this happens um, it can cause um, contraction of this particular area of the back of the eye. So imagine getting a piece of cling film and placing that cling film on your skin and then pulling it the underlying skin would look all wrinkled. The piece of cling film, which in this analogy is the scar tissue, will contract and as it does so, it causes distortion of the underlying macular region. So you might be wondering why you have developed an epiretinal membrane. More often than not, it's what we class as an idiopathic condition. So it occurs for reasons that we don't really understand. Otherwise, it can occur as part of what's known as a posterior vitreous detachment. Please do watch my other video about PVDs to learn more about these. Or it can occur as part of other retinal insults. This can include previous vein occlusions, previous major surgery into the back of the eyes to treat diabetes, or even after retinal detachment surgery. The next question that patients typically have is, if I have this epiretinal membrane, how will it affect my vision? In some patients, they can be asymptomatic, i.e. they have no symptoms at all. In other patients, they may notice a discrepancy between the vision between the two eyes, and they also may notice that um, things that they know to be straight, such as the edge of door frames, the edge of tables, they may start to appear slightly distorted, so basically wavy. This usually develops over time and doesn't occur suddenly. In addition to this, patients may find that general day-to-day -day tasks, such as reading, may become more challenging. In terms of the epiretinal membrane, remember what I said about it being similar to a piece of cling film in the back of the eye. When this scar tissue does contract and this or the cling film, whichever way you want to think of it, is pulled, that causes further wrinkling of the retina. And as this occurs, it means that vision will be affected to a greater degree. Usually an epiretinal membrane is diagnosed by the eye professional simply looking into the back of your eye with a special lens um, at the slit lamp. If there is, however, doubt or if one wants confirmation of the condition, then one can have an OCT scan, which is just a photograph, a specialised photograph of the back of the eye, and this can help to confirm the condition being present. Glasses, contact lenses or eye drops will not help with this condition. Usually the condition, if deemed severe enough, will require eye surgery. The usual indications for surgery with epiretinal membranes are if your vision is affected to a degree usually that's worse than the driving standard in the particular eye in question, and if you find that your activities of daily living are being impacted, then through close liaison with and discussion with an eye surgeon, surgery as a solution may be offered to you to try and rectify the problem. By not having surgery, if your vision is not being currently affected by the epiletinal membrane, then 
one of two things may happen. Your vision may very well stay the same and the membrane may not impact upon your vision or over time the membrane may start to impact upon your vision at which point the decision whether or not to have surgery can be potentially revisited. In terms of the basic concepts of surgery then, the surgery is typically performed under local anesthesia and in a nutshell what it involves is removing the jelly from the back of your eye so that you can gain access to the retina and the membrane and then simply peeling the membrane off the retina. One thing to bear in mind with epiretinal membrane surgery is that your vision unfortunately may not recover to the same level and standard that it was prior to developing the epiretinal membrane. It's also important to remember that the recovery process can be several months. And another final point to remember is that in some patients, the membrane may actually return. It also goes without saying that if in addition to the epiretinal membrane, you have other problems in the back of your eye, then by fixing the epiretinal membrane, this does not directly mean that your vision will dramatically improve because it may still very well be limited by the other conditions that you have. Thank you so much for watching this video about epiretinal membrane. I hope it has helped to improve your knowledge about the condition, how it can affect one's life and how it can be treated. If you found this video useful, please do click the like, the subscribe button and the bell icon to help my channel to grow and to help, my, and to, help to support my channel. Thank you so much once again. Take care.